What's up guys, I'm LQ, this is the LQ Review. Thank you so much for joining me right here at my YouTube channel. This is where we talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. Movies, video games, comic books, TV shows, and right now I'd like to give you guys my review of Godzilla vs. Kong. Yes, I finally got around to watching it, and that, that's, that's a bit of a exaggeration finally getting around to watching it um it dropped on wednesday on hbo max i have hbo max but i waited i waited till i had the chance to see it in the theaters because this is a movie that i felt demanded to be seen on the big screen so i waited it and i finally saw it on saturday on the big screen in the theater and what did i think of it eh. <laughs> like, like I, I liked it I liked it. It was okay. Um, the monster violence was great. The monster violence was great. The movie as a whole was okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, the, the, so there's two groups of people working this movie. You got Millie Bobby Brown working with the kid from Deadpool and uh, a conspiracy theorist. And they're, they're Team Godzilla. And they're trying to kind of learn about why Godzilla is attacking people now, even though he's always kind of been people's protector. And then on the other side, of, you've got a group of people with Alexander Skarsgård, Rebecca Hall. Um, you've got a group of people who are trying to get Kong to Hollow Earth, which is supposed to be a contained land in the center of the Earth that has all these animals, all these uh, titans living there. And they're trying to get Kong to Hollow Earth because it's it's a safe place for him, but there's also an energy source there that an organization called Apex wants so that they can power their Godzilla contingency plan. So they're trying to get Kong to Hollow Earth. And whenever either group of people is on the screen, I'm honestly, I was kind of bored, especially the Millie Bobby Brown storyline. The Godzilla storyline was especially boring because it just, it felt like it was a different movie from the, from, so from the, you have the, the, the monsters fighting. You got that part of the movie. You've got Kong looking for the hollow earth with his people. That's part of that movie. But then it felt like in a completely different movie, you had Millie Bobby Brown and, uh, that story it felt if like the tone the comedy the the aesthetics everything felt different the movie the fights were great don't get me wrong the fights were great and they have come so far with special effects this is some of the best special effects cgi rendering it, it probably is the best cgi i've ever seen in a movie i don't know thanos was pretty good but this is very good CGI, like top of the line, as good as it gets. It looked photorealistic. There's very few instances where I felt like I was looking at a video game. There, there were a few, to be sure, but very few. Um, so the fights were great, but the problem was that the narrative that drove the fights didn't always make sense. It didn't always make sense. And there was always like, like, leaps of logic that were taken. L let's assume that Hollow Earth is something that could possibly exist without crushing everything in the center of it. <laughs> um, it's still a silly concept. Like, it's, it's everything about the ideology behind Hollow Earth was a silly the Titans came from there. Well, why can't the, why the Titans have to come from there? I, I like, I just don't <laughs> Godzilla and Kong have had this ancient war. Well, how come we haven't covered this? I get we've seen some cave paintings. <laughs> I get we've seen some we've seen some some drawings in the past four movies, but there was little narrative that was setting this up. We just had to accept it all as fact. Um, Skull Island has changed so much since uh, Kong Skull Island that we have to just accept that from 2014's Godzilla to now the technology has. It has increased at such an exponential rate that they can now create a Hunger Games Hunger Games dome over Skull Island. We just have to accept that, and I don't. I like that. That that's a leap of logic. We have to accept that from Godzilla twenty fourteen to now, we have spaceships that can go to the center of the Earth and and hover off the ground and and keep you know 
supercharged King Kong's heart. I mean, we had this is stuff we have to accept. We have to accept for whatever reason that that uh, Hong Kong <laughs> looks like looks like um, a cartoon version of Hong Kong <laughs> uh, with all the neon lights and all the pretty lights. I don't know. There's just a lot of leaps of logic here that that I had a really difficult time with accepting. Um, even with suspending my disbelief, which I'm very good at doing, you know, I can watch almost any movie and just be like, well, I accept it. That's the world they presented in this story, and I accept it. But I had a hard time accepting this because it, this is not the same world they, they presented in Godzilla 2014. This is a completely different world, and we haven't been able to connect the dots to say how they got from Godzilla 2014 all the way over here to this world. We haven't made sense of that. We haven't explained it. So all of a sudden, we're being, we're being asked to accept something that's completely different from what we know to be true over here, which was just, what, seven years ago, eight years ago. Um doesn't make doesn't make sense like i said the fights were great but i would like to point something out here in avengers infinity war thor gets beat by thanos he then goes to a mystical realm to find a magical axe that is capable of beating thanos all right that's established in, in avengers infinity war in kong or godzilla versus kong Kong gets beat by Godzilla, so he goes on a journey to a mystical realm to get a magical axe that can defeat Godzilla. Same movie. <laughs> it's the same movie. How come nobody's noticed this? It's the same exact movie. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I liked it. Like I liked the movie. I had a fun with it. It was a, it was a stupid, stupid, silly, fun, good time. It was nowhere near as good as Godzilla: King of the Monsters, but it was a silly, stupid good time at the movies. I was, I was just glad to be back at the movies, right? I was just glad to be back at the movies. And, um, you know, the end fight was predictable when Godzilla and Kong team up with Mecha Godzilla. It was predictable. Um, they team up to take out Mecha Godzilla. It was predictable. I understood it. I liked the idea that, um, that Mecha Godzilla kind of became Monster Zero. Uh, I wasn't, I didn't see that coming. That actually surprised me. Uh, that kind of Monster Zero kind of took control of Mecha Godzilla, so that was pretty cool. But other than that, like the fight, the fight between with Kong and Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla was a little bit too too short. Once Kong got got his axe, it was game over for Mecha Godzilla. Um, and I know I get why they why they wanted Kong to be the decisive victor over Mecha Godzilla because Godzilla beat Kong so bad. And Adam Wingard said there would be a winner between Godzilla versus Kong, and there was. Godzilla beat Kong and he beat him bad. But then they wanted the Kong fans to have something where they could hold their heads high. So it ended up being Kong who just owned Mecha Godzilla. So I get it. I just felt like the fight was a little bit too fast, especially once Kong picked up his axe. Um, disappointed that there was no end credit scene, that there was nothing that kind of teased the future. Is is this going to be the end of the MonsterVerse? I don't know. Um, I, I do hope that it goes on because I have liked all these movies. Um, I just felt like this one, they rushed to get here. And once they got here, there was a lot of leaps of logic that we had to take to make it work. I liked it. I just didn't love it. Because it didn't always make complete and total sense to me. But that's okay. That's okay, because we had big monsters fighting big monsters. <laughs> like, where was Rodan? Where was Rodan in this? Like, the, the, are we just... This, are we just accepting now that all the Titans have been killed except for Godzilla and Kong or that they've re retreated? I don't know. I don't know. Um, at the end of God, at the end of Godzilla King of the Monsters, I thought that you had a group of Titans that was bowing to Godzilla. And then you had another group of Titans who was going to go bow to Kong. And then each one of them would have their Titan army. That, that, was, that was the fight I wanted to see in this movie. Instead, we got got we got King Kong being carried on helicopters, just like he just like in King Kong versus Godzilla, nineteen sixty two or whenever it was. Yeah, yeah. I, this is not this this is not the movie I wanted, but it's the movie we got, and it wasn't horrible. So that's kind of my take on it. I give I give Godzilla versus Kong. I give it a C. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was just there. And sometimes, sometimes, gigantic monsters beating up on gigantic monsters just has to be enough. And sometimes it's worth the death 
of hundreds and hundreds of people in a building so Kong can relocate his shoulder. <laughs> he smashes his shoulder against a building that probably has hundreds of people in it. Building crumbles, but God, Kong has his shoulder relocated again. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, guys. I give it a C. I thought it was good, not great. What did you think of uh, Godzilla vs. Kong? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your take on it. While you're down there, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out a lot of content, and I want to make sure that you're up to date with everything that I'm doing. And as always, thank you so much for joining me right here at the OK Review, where we get to talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. And until next time, we'll see you guys later.